Why do we use Roman numerals in music? How did this all get started? First of all, until last week, I had no idea who was the first person to use Roman numerals in music. It turns out that a man named G. J. Vogler was the first man who started using Roman numerals in this way. He was born in 1749, and that's very close to when Bach died in 1750. Mozart believed Vogler was a charlatan, but somehow his idea took root and is still alive to this very day. Gottfried Weber continued the idea of using Roman numerals by using them to represent chords in his 1821 book, The Theory of Music, an instructional text on musical composition. He was born in 1779, only nine years later than Beethoven, so that will give you a bit of an idea of when all of this stuff first happened. Now comes the big question. Where are Roman numerals useful and where are they not useful? I'm going to give you a very broad picture tonight of where I use them and where I stay away from them. Roman numerals are very useful for things like primary chords, which are simply one, four, and five chords in any key. In this case, it is a very convenient way of talking about these three chords in any key without using letter names. And these primary chords have been important for many centuries. Tonight, I will only mention that these primary chords may be major or minor in any combination. They can be all major, they can be all minor, They can move from major to all minor. And they can move from minor to all major. Any combination of major and minor is possible in music that is not restricted to some narrow system. So when we use Roman numerals for broad concepts, they can be very convenient and therefore very useful. But they become confusing and needlessly complicated when they are combined with figured bass. That happens when modern music schools supposedly teaching classical music mix together figured bass as used by Bach with Roman numerals that describe inversions of chords. I'm going to have to go down a rabbit hole to begin to explain the unholy mess that happens when we combine these two completely different systems together because they don't work well together at all. I do explain this complicated system to my more advanced students, but only to prepare them for what I think they may run into in theory classes that I think are very, very poor. For this video, I am simply going to give you a picture of what these inversions look like in the system that is taught, and you can decide for yourselves if you want to investigate this idea any further. I'm simply going to tell you flat out that I never use this system because it drives me away from hearing what I hear. For playing and improvising and composing, it just gets in my way. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, leave me comments about anything you like, anything you want to see in the future, and remember that I consider all suggestions.